Here's what's coming up tonight on our news. Boxing Day blunder, a night of great weather, puts a damper on the decision to postpone Junk Canoe. And the party shot, a man killed while enjoying Christmas festivities. We've got these stories and more coming up on our news. Brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us on Boxing Day. I'm Jared Higgs. Topping news tonight, the 2017 Boxing Day Junk New Parade is underway at this hour after being delayed in anticipation of inclement weather. Well, anybody who took a look or stepped outside last night would know that it would have been the perfect night for Junk New. This wasn't on anybody's Christmas wish list. The 2017 Boxing Day Junk New Parade postponed for inclement weather that never arrived. It all started on Sunday when Junk New groups voted to sidestep its 12-hour rule that calls for a decision on postponement to be made 12 hours prior to the parade start time. At around 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve, 27 hours before the scheduled start time, Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Michael Pintard and the parade management team officials held a press conference announcing that the parade will be held at 8 p.m. on Boxing Day, nearly 24 hours later than its original start time of 10 p.m. on Christmas night. Speculative backlash was immediate. Junk renewers and ticket purchasers wondered and worried about the Wednesday workday. As the weather on Christmas Day held, reports circulated that the parade management team wanted to switch back to a 10 o'clock start time. Junkanoo groups wouldn't have it, fearing that they wouldn't be able to effectively mobilize their groups. The start time was changed again, moving up two hours to 6 p.m. on Boxing Day. Bahamian soca artist Wendy says she couldn't see any rain outside her house, while local rapper Tunash offered some assistance to the Department of Meteorology's top man. Bilo rapper Solo was on the Meteorology Department Deputy Director's case as well, quickly producing one of his viral tunes. I look inside the sky, the sky that blue. I wish I had your number so I could call you. You said that the rain was coming. I look out my window and guess what? I ain't see nothing. Red arena. It's supposed to rain cat and dog. But your prediction state was wrong. Junk new ticket resales also skyrocketed with sellers using social media to advertise their passes. Of course, ticket purchasers who would have planned to leave the island on the evening of Boxing Day were worse off. One commentator from Turks and Caicos questioned who would refund the $490 she spent to come to the Bahamas for the parade. All in all, what many are calling a questionable use of waiver powers, leaving the parade management team blush in the face. Chairman of the Junkanoo Corporation of New Providence, Silbert Ferguson, is defending Junkanoo organizers' decision to postpone the parade. Ferguson says they can only go by the information they're given. We can only operate based on the weather forecast we receive from the Met Office. We receive rain on Sunday evening, uh, all of Christmas Day, that we will not be able to mobilize into the parade for 10 p.m. And so once that is understood, okay, because we got the all class signal on Monday morning, everybody has already shifted gears. And groups felt that it was going to be difficult to have everybody back in that mode in such a short time after knowing that the parade has already been switched to a day because of a 60% chance of rain. The JCNP chairman says the decision to bypass the 12 hour rule wasn't taken lightly. But I want to, to, to back into last Wednesday, we were given a rain forecast of 60%. On Saturday morning, we received an email that we only have a 10% chance of rain for the parade so it was a go. On Saturday evening at a rain meeting, we have 60% showers. Okay, now how would you react? Okay, and so what we did was we said instead of waiting until Monday morning at 10 o'clock, the groups decided to vote to move <coughs> the 12-hour window back to 20 hours on Sunday evening at 6. 
This is for the benefit of everybody. Asked whether Junkanoo should incorporate a rain or shine rule, Ferguson says he isn't a fan. He says instead infrastructure needs to be put in place. Well, but I think one of the things we have to recommend is the fact that we, we, we in our country, we talk a lot. And um, the Junkanoo Village is something that we have talked about forever. And so let us build the Junkanoo Village. Let us put the dome roof over the Junkanoo Village. And let us have our set area for, to parade Junkanoo. And you will have no challenges with weather. You know, all of the groups will be in the arena. Uh, they'll have their, their shacks in the arena. And all it means is once the time is called, uh, then we just parade. But right now, with the elements in the open, and it's very, very difficult to, to, to uh, basically ask these Junkanoo groups after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to parade in the water, you know, uh, and it's not going to happen, and, and these kids will not do it. You know, they, they are putting their hands in their pockets to the tone of three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, you know, on their costumes, you know, and so we have to respect that. We will not ask one of our great outstanding artists to put their work in the middle of Bay Street in weather. We respect these kids the same way, you know. A party turned deadly in Elizabeth Estates last night when a man was shot while standing with a group of people. Superintendent Shanta Knowles fills us in on the details. Shortly after 12.30 a.m., we received call a call that gunshots were heard on the Commonwealth Boulevard area of Elizabeth Estates. Officers responded to this scene and discovered that a male had been shot. The information thus far is that uh, this male was attending a party at Commonwealth Boulevard. He was standing outside speaking with other persons when he was approached by a gunman who opened fire, hitting him. And of course, he was confirmed deceased on the scene. We are appealing to the public those who may have information or who may have been around when this incident occurred to contact the police and give us the information so that we could bring this matter to a quick closure. In other crime news, police are busy investigating two Christmas night carjackings that took place right here in the capital. In the first incident, it was shortly after 9 o'clock when a man was robbed of his red 2013 Honda Civic and other items by two armed men. The incident took place in the vicinity of the Eastern Road. In the second incident, a woman was pulling up to her home on Bradley Street near Sunset Park when two armed men robbed her of her blue Honda Fit vehicle. Investigations into both of these matters continues. Over in Grand Bahama, police there are arresting a man for possessing an unlicensed firearm. Reports are that it was shortly after midnight when officers in the vicinity of a business establishment on Midshipman Road noticed a group of men fighting. Upon intervention, they discovered one of the men to be in possession of a black and silver 45 caliber pistol with nine rounds of the applicable ammunition. He was taken into custody and is expected to be arraigned before a magistrate later this week. Officers of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force apprehending several foreign nationals without the proper documentation. Reports indicate that it was shortly after 5 this morning when officers on routine patrol spotted a 36-foot Sundance cabin cruiser named Code Blue near the Montague foreshore. Upon conducting a routine check of the vessel, it was discovered that the 14 persons on board did not have the necessary documentation to enter the country. The passengers and crew were all taken into custody. Among the nationalities on board were nine Ecuadorians, one Colombian, one Dominican, one Jamaican and one American. They were handed over to police and immigration authorities for processing. This follows the Defense Force's apprehension of 87 Haitian migrants off the coast of Anagua on Saturday. When our news returns, find out about the state of affairs of healthcare in the storm-ravaged southern islands. You're watching the best in Bahamian news.